Right, this is the second video of two that I'm making about the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. I might make a third one if I feel like it. But anyway, this is the second video. Uh, in the first one, I talked about uh, geopolitics and I just have a few things to add to that because I was thinking about it after I finished making it and I thought, how could I have left out the really obvious pattern, which Saturn-Pluto pattern, which is the pattern of China. Um, because China was, uh, I just go back to 1947, but you can go back further and it still works. 1947, um, I think China adopted its uh, a, a constitution. In 1949 was the People's Republic was started. So it was just beginning around then. 1947 was that was the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto. Then in 1966, China had the Cultural Revolution, which was a huge and massive upheaval when people with glasses were sent off to the gulags and uh, teachers, professors, uh, professionals were lambasted and terrorized. It was a time of actual terror uh, in China. Then in 1982, all change. China adopted the current constitution that it has now and became the started on its path to economic superparadigm by adopting some of these economic changes that have made it so incredibly successful in the last however many years that is. Then in 2001, on that same subject, China joined, joined the World Trade Organization, right? Boom. So, and now we have 2020, and I would say that between 1982 and 2020, one of the major stories of that period, if not the major story when our uh, uh, descendants look at their history books, is the rise of China, the return of China, actually. It's not the rise of China from nothing, it's just the return of China to where it should be, um, which is as a major world power. So you have the hegemony of the United States from 1982 to now, and you have China rising at the same time. Um, and I'm sure that if you look at your own country, you can find patterns like this too. I looked also at Pakistan, but maybe uh, just really quickly, Pakistan's interesting, born on in 1947 on the conjunction. What happens in 1982 is they do adopted Sharia law. They adopt, it's the Islamization under Zia al -Haq. Um And then uh, 2001, from 2001, Onwards, after 9-11, Pakistan just is a terrible kind of war zone. If you look at events in Pakistan, it's one bombing after the other. So look at your own country and or look at where you live and see if you can see a pattern or your own family. It's really interesting. Um, and it's about, this conjunction is about power, okay? So look at, uh, you know, power shifts, power uh, uh, consolidation. Um, and this current one, okay, so that's, a little bit more background. I said that I would talk about how this current one now in 2020 is a really huge um, uh, conjunction because there are many more planets than are involved than usual in particular and they're on a very tiny point in the sky you know okay so the, the other one that's really well the other two that are really important or the other three anyway it's, there are five planets involved. So there's Mercury, the Sun, Pluto, Saturn, and Ceres. Pluto, Saturn, and Ceres are on exactly the same degree, okay? So that's between 22 and 23 degrees of Capricorn. If you have any planets that are at 22, 23, 24, 20, uh, near that point, um, especially, of course, if they're you know important, uh, like the Sun and the Moon, but if you have any planets near that point, not just in Capricorn, but in Aries, Libra, and Cancer, you will be feeling this in some part of your life. And it may be a sense of loss of power or a gaining of power, depending on how it works out for you, okay? Um, and you will be experiencing endings. Just yesterday, or was it today? The day before yesterday, the uh, Prince Harry and um, his wife Meghan have decided that they are quitting the royal family, uh, which and you can't get anything more kind of Capricorn, which is about institutions and establishment, than the British royal family. So they've decided that they are quitting it, uh, which is a major shift for that, for that for the royal family. And what's interesting about that is I've been wondering, when I was looking at this guy, I thought, oh, you know. 
who's got that? Who's got this stuff going on? And I thought, actually, William and Catherine have really, their charts are incredibly powerfully impacted by this uh, conjunction in the sky and by the eclipse, which is happening today. So the eclipse ties into this conjunction. It's a time of, of change. And so in a way, I think you can see some consolidation of power as well going on for Catherine, Duchess of whatever she's the Duchess of Cambridge. Uh, you know, that's so that's just an example. I mean, that, but there are many more probably important endings. Um, for example, the well, you know, that air, airliner was shot down and we had the uh, that assassination. So there's a lot of stuff shifting, a lot of endings happening. The volcano blew up in Mexico uh, today, just this morning. So, um, and speaking of the volcano, I wanted to mention that's a really interesting uh, signifier because the involvement of Ceres in this triple conjunction suggests to me that this is about our relationship with the planet and our how we look after the planet, okay? Because Ceres is the asteroid to do with agriculture. She taught us how to grow stuff. And she's the one who, when she disappears, the, the world is barren, okay? Um, and maybe, you know, she's making this conjunction with Pluto, the lord of the underworld. She's busy. She's doing other stuff. The, the world is barren. Um, uh, our relationship with the planet and how we treat nature is, uh, you know, we have to turn a corner now or else. I think that's what this is about. And this conjunction is very big. So the sun is also involved. Uh, so it's about our identity, what, who we are as human beings. This is all going to unfold over a long time, by the way. But in the same way that I've just looked back at 1982 and 1966 and 1947, I can, you can start to see these patterns. We'll be able to look back at 2020 and say this was the beginning of a new period. And this was also the end of a particular uh, period and it's to do with the endings are to do with government with fathers with family that's why the royal family is such a perfect example actually uh, with government with family with supranational institutions so we are going to see the other thing that's happened that happened in 1947 of course was the creation of the UN um, or the new UN wasn't it it was established in New York at that time and and so we've had that since then. So those sort of institutions, those big, or NATO, these ones are going to be changing. Um, and they may change. There may be a rapidity about this because of so many planets being involved. So it may happen. It may unfold quite quickly. Um, so in your own life, think of what you want to let go, what you want to leave behind, what you want to change, but also what it is that you're making way for. What's the new regime that you're going to allow in? Um, just a word of caution as well. I would say, you know, don't go uh, getting really anxious about this, but I wouldn't sort of do anything dangerous uh, at this point and it, this week because of the eclipse and the huge conjunction. I wouldn't get on a plane, for example. Uh, I wouldn't travel. I'd just be a bit reasonably cautious uh, about what you do and who you and who you're engaging with as well especially for certain signs but yeah who you, who you're talking to uh, and what you say I should be really careful about what I'm saying now shouldn't I I take it all back um, see you next time <laughs>